Hello, this is Krutim. Today I'll be talking about the SAT's invisible ceiling. How real is the SAT's invisible ceiling? Almost everyone who has studied and has taken the test enough times would say it's very real. When you look at your first mock test, you all started off with different points. Some of you got 900 on your first try, some got 1100, some 1300. Then you look at the average accepted score of your dream school. The median score in the past years were 1350, 1400, or 1450. Now you have set your goal. You need to get that, let's say, at least 1430 to have a good chance at your dream school. You brought books, all of them. Barron's, Princeton Review, Kaplan. You grinded through the books. You can't even remember how many hours you have put into studying the SAT. You sign up for courses at a couple of tutor schools. They all promise you would improve your score by 150 points or repeat the course for free. You learn all the tips, the tricks, and the techniques, which help, but the application deadline is approaching. Your final mock score is on your best day around 1400, on your worst day around 1350. Nowhere near your goal of 1430, you have hit the invisible ceiling. You know it's not just a matter of time. You know even if you have another 3 months, it wouldn't be enough to improve 100 points in reading writing or 50 points in math. At this point, you are starting to accept the reality. We are just born differently. Those people with 1500, 1600 score are just smart and you sadly are just not as smart. At this point, you might expect me to give you a magical solution to this problem which I don't have one. Nobody has one. The only thing I have is an explanation, rather a theory. But please take it with a grain of salt because this is my personal speculation. The SAT is an aptitude test. And yes, to some degree, there are patterns and styles to the problem that you can get familiar with. Because when designing the problems, college board staff need to follow their standards and guidelines in order to keep the difficulty of the test along the same line every year. But at the end of the day, it is still an aptitude test. Let me give you a hypothetical example. There are two boys. Let's name them Bob and Dave. Bob and Dave are being tested on how fast they can swim a 50 meter lap. Neither of them are a good swimmer. They can at most keep themselves from drowning and have the ability to propel themselves forward in water. So on their first try, their time would not be so good. Of course, to improve their swimming time, they take swimming lesson, learning the right movement, correct breathing techniques, and all those necessary. But there is a significant difference between Bob and Dave. Bob is a little high on his BMI because of his love for good food and desserts, but not so much for exercising. While Dave is on the school basketball team and play regularly for years. Yes. At the end of their swimming lesson, both of them can swim faster than when they first started off. But I don't have to tell you who is the faster swimmer between the two of them. At the end of the day, both Bob and Dave learned the same swimming techniques. But Dave most likely came out on top because of his better stamina and muscle structure he built up from all the years he has been playing basketball. The story of Bob and Dave could somewhat give you an idea why everyone has a different ceiling on SAT score. So is there nothing you can do to break the invisible ceiling? Before I can answer that question, let us think about what does each section of SAT trying to test you. The reading part tries to test your reading comprehension. So to do well on it, you need to be good at comprehending and analyzing text. How to be good at that? You read a lot for many many years. The more you read, the more vocabs you encounter, the more you know the proper context those vocabs can be used for, the better you know how to read between the lines and understand the feelings, analogy, or sarcasm others try to convey through that text. The writing part tries to test how well you know the standard of good writing conventions. So to do well on it, you have to read good writings. You try to pick up the proper English grammar, and then you write. The more you write, the better you know how to write. The more you know how to make your story flow, what should come first, and what should come after. The math part is easy to understand. If you have a good understanding of math, 
this part should not be too difficult to improve. There is only so much pattern you can learn in the style of the question. But every year, there will be a couple of questions that are designed to test your ability to apply math beyond what you have done before. Those questions are the ones that distinguish people who get 800 in math from everyone else. So can you break the invisible ceiling? The answer is yes. Yes, if you improve your fundamental skills, and these skills have nothing to do with practicing the SAT test itself. If you have several years ahead, and you have not been the person who like to read or write much, now you know what to do. If you have not been learning math to understand how the fundamental works, and have been memorizing formulas to get by each exams, now you know what to do. The SAT is not an easy test. It is the test that is used by colleges for many years to determine which student's aptitude is the top 10%, 5%, or 1% among their age group. If there is a way to get 1600 score in 6 months, every tutor school would have advertised so. Unfortunately, there isn't. There is no easy way out. That is why everyone only advertised that they can improve your score by how much. The real development takes time and effort. That's why SAT is the test that rewards people who have built up a genuine intellectual habits in language, logic, and math. Lastly, thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you. Remember, preparation ensures success. See you next time.